they want to hide is the fact that these corporations are really the ones that make public policy. We don't really vote for politicians. We vote for corporate puppets. And not only were they making energy policy up in there, they were dictating it to them. Let's revisit activist director and hip hop artist Boots Riley. What other policy do these corporations help make? I want to know who told them to cut welfare reform. Which corporations were in the boardroom meeting with, with Bill Clinton on that? I want to know, I want to know really if they have something to do with about this war because we know that the State Department was working with Enron. How do I know that the bombing that's going on in Afghanistan is not to fight terrorism, it's to create little states, little Enron states, little Exxon states all throughout the Middle East and little Chiquita banana republics. As always, when you have folks who go on shows such as these and disagree with the status quo, there is resounding pushback from the panelists who like things the way they are. Not only are they listening to these corporations, they're owned by these corporations. They're, they're, the people in the cabinet are on the payroll for Enron. The, the uh, head of the Republican National Committee collects a seven-figure salary from Enron and, and lobbies for them. The, you know, yes. wait, wait, and, and they fire I, people I, on the cabinet. They say this person is not Boots, working I agree with, with some and they fire them. Yes, so the whole time. I agree with some of what you say. <laughs> I don't think Enron's trying to take over Afghanistan, But, but precisely. I mean, well, they have enough troubles. Your okay, not only your them, Your conclusion but, that we are trying to establish banana republics in Afghanistan, no. that's a far-fetched conclusion, you know. Case in point, Eric Brayden who in present day is an anti-Trumper. But he can't wrap his head around Riley's points. A quick jump to a recent interview Boots did. Yeah, I saw the clip of you on Bill Maher. Uh, I'm not a big fan of Bill Maher. Oh yeah, no, nah, no, nah, he's undercover, right wing, racist. What was funny is the comedian dude. Um, yeah, Harlan Williams. Yeah, he, during the commercial, he was like, Man, I really agree with everything you're saying. They just told me I'm supposed to do this. I'm supposed to be the funny one and, you know, make fun of you to keep it light so people will watch more, you know. That's crazy. Yes, it is. And the saddest part is it wasn't subtle. Here's Williams, again, doing as he is told, mocking and mimicking Riley on the show. Honestly, it's just a sad sight to behold. After a commercial break, Mar would bring the following story to light. A Muslim woman sued Florida because the state, per the Orlando Sentinel, suspended her license when she refused to have her photo taken without an Islamic veil. May God bless the Sultana, but there's a separation of church and state in America. And if the state asks you to take your veil off, to be photographed, then you bloody well do that. This obviously became contentious as well. From Dan Nealon of AV Club, Boots Riley quickly becomes the only person on the show who, with 15 years of hindsight, doesn't sound like a total a-hole. While Marr is working out some of his signature borderline Islamophobic material, and the other guests seem to just nod along in agreement, Boots Riley would point out that removing the woman's hijab only became an issue after 9-11 and is just one of many reactionary xenophobic initiatives the state is trying to enforce. What you're not mentioning though that should be said, before September 11th, she was given two driver's licenses wearing her veil, well, that and it wasn't a problem. Right. But now it only became a problem because of who she is. Riley would go on to say the show was choreographed more than people think, adding quote, it's probably at the same level that many of the reality shows are. The producers do interviews with people beforehand and ask you what you think about certain things. Then they go back and do another round of interviews and tell you what other people said. And then they ask different people to do different roles. What was interesting was that on that show, there's that comedian and he was making fun of my hand gestures. I forget his name, Harlan or something. The dude that's on one of the first Dave Chappelle movies. He's referencing Half-Baked. One of the things that I would want to see is a world that, that you know, that, that we create in which the people democratically control the wealth that we create with our labor. Now, that, that would be communism. But in order to get there, we need, in order to change things a little or a lot, and even to get there, we need uh, to have a mass militant radical labor movement. Riley would continue reflecting to the Chicago Reader. So that's what that was like. 
I've seen so many people go on Bill Maher. I wasn't the first rapper on there. I've seen everybody go on there and every time they'd say some slightly racist quip and people would laugh along and not want to say anything that might get them uninvited from the show. Snoop was on there and Snoop was like, I got three kids. And Mars like, that you know of. What I'm doing is not just trying to get, not just trying to stop participating in this system. What I'm trying to do is get people to overthrow the system. And that's two different things. And because you can't stop participating in this system. It, you know, there's, there's no way to do that. As AV Club concluded, clips like these are just proof that Boots Riley has always been just as authentically radical as he is today. It's just taken a long time for the rest of us to catch up to him. The greatness of this country is based on the separation of church and state. That is what makes this country great. You don't impose your richest views on state government. You do not do that in this country. We don't walk in. We don't do that. We don't do that. We don't want to do that. No, we don't want to do that. Well, that's just flat out insane from the TV star. Our government is infected throughout time with the illusion of the separation, but it is not practice. Then this jabroni would go even further when it did not have to get to this point, nor be uttered. But she wants to drive. They want the best part of America, the modernity. They want all the good the stuff. They want to have a cell phone to call to say, September hey guys, come over to the beheading. An Islamophobic racist is Mar. Always has been, always will be. Meanwhile, Riley would direct such films as Sorry to Bother You. Speaking with Jacobin, he'd say, in the world of film, we've edited out all rebellion. We're supposed to be showing representations of life and whether the main characters in those worlds agree with it or not. There's rebellion that's happening in the world. It's edited out. It's replaced by other mundane things that aren't really in our world, like noontime cafe dates. He'd ask rhetorically, what is capitalism? It's the exploitation of labor and everything that grows out from that point. That is the fulcrum point of capitalism. That is also the part that we could have control of collectively. A bit more of his backstory via Jacobin. His father, Walter Riley, was an anti-war activist at San Francisco State University in the 60s before moving to Detroit to organize auto workers. That's where Boots was born in 71. Later, they moved back to Oakland, where Walter set up a civil rights law practice. By the time the younger Riley was a teen, Boots had joined the Progressive Labor Party and was organizing farm workers. He met the two rappers, who had gone to form the coup with him while working part-time at UPS. Fast forward to an interview with Variety, a quote that rings true to this day. I don't know if my politics have evolved since sorry to bother you, he says. The thing that has evolved is my artistic approach to talking about the same thing. Going further, he'd add, I'm not just against police because they're sometimes brutal, or they sometimes murder people. It's about what they're here for in the first place and what position they have under capitalism. People think maybe if they weren't murderous and brutal, then it would be okay. And then you could have other propaganda that makes them seem nicer, but it really doesn't matter what kind of person they are. It's about their function under this system. Hey, I appreciate you watching. Now, if you can, please do become a channel member by going to youtube.com slash TYT sports and clicking the join button. If that's too much for you, you can just go to tyt.com slash join to become a member. It helps all of us out here at the Young Turks and keeps our network afloat. In addition, you could follow me on my socials on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Appreciate the love. Have a great day.